Hey, how's it going everybody? Drew Creel here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the supply chain issues currently plaguing the new electric guitar market here in the United States and around the world. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. You're not gonna wanna miss this. start off by talking about a Facebook group that I'm a part of. It's called Extended Range Guitar Nerds. Some of you that watch my channel I'm sure are aware of this Facebook group. It has roughly 15,000 members and I really like this Facebook group because I'm always seeing interesting pictures of guitars, different brands that I've never heard of before, custom builds. Um, I, I like being a part of this group because it has a lot of pertinent information based on the type of guitar playing and the type of you know guitar, the instruments that I'm interested in. And recently I made a post on that Facebook group. Basically what I did is I took some screenshots of these out of stock guitars on the Sweetwater website and I posted it on there and I said, hey, what do you guys think of this? Um, wh what do you think's going on? can we talk about this supply chain crisis? There were several people in the group that contributed really well and, and shared some insight that, that I was not aware of, and that was helpful. There were also several people that just accused me of being a complete idiot, stupid, living under a rock. Those of you that said that, that's okay. I would probably think I'm living under a rock too. Essentially, I'm in the market for a new guitar. I'm pretty much ready to pull the trigger on a seven string, eight string guitar, extended range. I'm just looking for a cool new metal machine, you know, maybe something with some Fishman Fluence pickups or, or just something interesting and modern looking. I was a little uh, alarmed to find out that pretty much every guitar that I'm interested in as a guitar player is out of stock. And when you look at the estimated arrival time for those instruments at the stores like Sweetwater, they're saying that those guitars will arrive in June, July, August of 2022. And I think they're probably saying that because they don't want to disappoint customers. And, you know, there's chances are that they'll get them in earlier. They're just letting guitar players know that, hey, your guitar might not show up for six months. So don't be mad at us. What I wanted to do in this video is talk about some of those supply chain issues and mention some of the things that some of these key players in the guitar industry like Fender and Gibson, what are those guys saying about the guitar market and these supply chain issues? Let's rewind the clock back to 2020 when the pandemic kicked off. Um, I remember it being around uh, the first or second week of February when news sites were reporting about the pandemic and we were looking at locking things down, shutting things down. And then I wanna say that almost the entire month of March, I stayed in my house. And uh, as a guitar teacher and as someone who um, is in education, I was able to work from home and it actually kind of worked out conveniently for me. But I think many people throughout the United States kind of found themselves in this position where they're having to work from home. And uh, so they're, they're finding that they have more time on their hands, or at least that's what Fender is reporting with the pandemic. Fender reported the best year in sales in 2020. So they said the biggest year in sales volume in Fender history, uh, largest amounts of sales uh, for women. So they're also, Fender is also saying that 50% of all of these new guitar sales, these new guitar players that are hitting the market are women. And I find that to be pretty interesting because if you look at Fender's marketing materials, all of their videos, their ads, um, they're highly, highly featuring women, persons of color. Hey, that's that's great if, if maybe they're seeing more guitar players buy Fender instruments like that. But I think what Fender is really doing there is they're just going after the, uh, the current culture. Fender, for example, in 2020 reported that it was their best year in sales in Fender history. So that's crazy. The pandemic year um, is the best 
sales year for Fender guitars. Who would have thought? Maybe it's because there's more people on the planet. They're trying to diversify, I guess, what would be typically thought of as their target market, which is which is dudes, you know, which is guys that are guitar players, right? The guitar community in general has often been described as a good old boys club, so to speak. I've never really thought that to be true. I can also understand how awkward it might be for a woman to walk into a guitar store, for example, in like 1990 or something, and it just being all all guitar guys but when I was coming up in the guitar community in the early 2000s uh, there were plenty of women that were involved in the guitar community and even several of them that worked at Guitar Center or local guitar stores in terms of that little data point that Fender's trying to point out 50% of all new customers are women I think that's interesting and I think it's mainly due to the fact that they're targeting women and they're targeting these non-traditional guitar players as their target market. So of course they're gonna find that 50% are women. So interesting stuff going on there. Fender's CEO, Andy Mooney, also said, we could have grown 50% easily this year. And by this year, he's referring to 2021. And I've got uh, a link to several of the articles that I'm citing in this video below that you guys can read those for yourself. So just to recap quickly, the pandemic starts People are staying in their homes for extended periods of time. They're becoming interested in playing guitar. Um, they're bored, so they decide to pick up a new hobby like playing guitar. They decide to order an electric guitar from Sweetwater or maybe from Reverb.com. Alongside that peaking interest in new guitar sales, you have companies with factories overseas. They are ceasing production and they're reducing their overall output, probably just to prevent workers from getting sick and potentially suing the company or putting together a massive lawsuit for like, you made me sick, you made me go to work during the pandemic. A lot of companies out there were playing this pandemic game very safe. They shut everything down. Now, I'm not here to say whether we should have done that or not. The pandemic itself has been incredibly devastating to so many people across the world. Uh, just people not being able to get jobs, right? And people not being able to go to work. You know, not everybody can uh, work from home on their couch and do Zoom calls all day. There's a lot of us that need to actually go into a building and put something together. And when your company or, or whoever you work for tells you you can't do that anymore, it can be definitely really scary. In addition to that, you've got other instances where a vessel, a ship loaded up with hundreds and hundreds of shipping containers is getting stuck in the canal. So I'm sure you guys remember the Ever Given getting stuck in the Suez Canal, remaining there for several weeks uh, while everyone's Amazon goods and uh, Sweetwater goods and Guitar Center goods are just sitting on a ship uh, out there while they try to get this, the ship unstuck, which is just an example of one disaster. Now, I've heard other stories purported that uh, vessels can't even enter the canals, like in the, like the port of LA, uh, the port of Savannah, for example. So. What they're having these ships do is stay out at sea for several weeks at a time. They're just out there floating around with all of our stuff. You know, what if a storm comes up? Uh, well, all of those containers are going uh, going overboard. I've actually heard other stories about just the, the driver of the uh, shipping vessel having to just unload out in the middle of the ocean um, all of the shipping containers and stuff just to navigate the treacherous waters, right? So when you tell a ship to stay out at sea for, uh, for several weeks and storms start showing up, hurricanes and high winds, the ship wasn't meant to stay out there and they, the captains of these ships have to plan around these storms and things like that. They can't, they can't stay out there for, for several weeks. Um, and so in, in one instance, uh, a, a captain had to unload a bunch of vessels, just drop them into the ocean, all those guitars and, you know, probably millions and millions and millions of dollars of goods falling down to the bottom of the ocean. Pretty crazy. Another thing that I find interesting is when you compare the guitar industry to the automotive industry, you find some similarities. So I'm sure many of you that are watching this have heard about the chip shortage with vehicles and how, you know, not only are we experiencing insane shortages of guitars, but there's also vehicles that are completely built, completely made, and they're out there sitting in a parking lot waiting for one little chip to come from China or another far off, um, you know, manufacturing facility that will be the brain of that vehicle so that all of the, the components and all of the computers in the, in the vehicles can uh, communicate 
together so uh, so that the truck can drive or the car can drive, right? So that's happening. But it's not just the automotive industry that needs those chips. It's also the guitar industry, right? So in all of our, our little practice amplifiers, you know, like the ones that Fender makes and Vox makes and Yamaha makes, um, those also use uh, similar chips that you might find in a vehicle, okay? And so amplifiers are another thing that fall prey to this uh, current chip shortage that's going on. And so when you zoom out and you look at the big picture, it sort of makes you wonder like, is there some sort of embargo going on? Is there some ploy that nations are playing against one another by not giving them things like masks, necessary items, uh, chips so that we can drive our cars, things like that. It sort of makes you wonder like what's going on, not to be too conspiratorial here. So to throw a couple other figures at you, Demand is currently 50% higher than supply, according to Andertons, the UK-based guitar and instrument retailer. Another thing that I found interesting was that the guitar industry pre-pandemic was growing by 10%, and now Fender is reporting that the guitar industry is now growing by 35%. And as I mentioned earlier, they were they were even boasting and saying that, hey, uh, we could have grown by 50%, you know, as a company, if we just had the guitars in stock. So I think the big picture issue here is that in the United States and in the UK and in other countries that have a lot of purchasing power, a lot of individuals and people in their country that, that have the ability to buy things. What we're finding is that when we heavily rely on other nations to produce all of our goods and we have something as critical as like a pandemic happening, we're just not going to have our things. We're not gonna get our cameras and our electronic devices and our guitars and our chips, computers, uh, graphics cards. These are some just various items that come to mind when you think about supply chain issues. And I just find this stuff very interesting and so it makes you wonder, like, why are we here right now? Why, why are we relying so heavily on these other nations to produce all of our goods? Well, it's cheaper to produce things overseas. And that's one of the things that for me as a, as a musician, as a guitar player, I like to buy things that are made in the United States, okay? The country where I live, because it supports the people that live here. It supports people like me who are from the United States. Now, I own several instruments made in Japan, Korea, Indonesia, Mexico. Um, um, and I, I love those. I have a Chinese made Yamaha acoustic guitar that plays phenomenally. So I'm not saying that these other countries can't make great instruments, but what I'm saying is that I choose to buy instruments made in the United States, um, which brings me to Kiesel Guitars, right? The company formerly known as Carvin Guitars. My orange Kiesel guitar is by far my all time favorite instrument and it, it plays really well. I, I, it's a headless guitar, it's ergonomic. You guys have all seen it on my channel. And so I think for me, my next instrument is probably going to be another Kiesel guitar because I know that they're gonna be able to deliver an insanely high quality instrument. And of course I'll have to wait a few weeks weeks for them to build it. I just find that way more attractive process than just buying something that's in stock, you know, potentially waiting four to six months to receive my instrument. Another thing you might want to try is buying a used guitar, although I will also report that used guitar prices have gone up considerably as well. So just to give you an example, I bought this Jackson Dinky, which dates back to 2012, 2011. I grabbed this guitar for $300 at a local guitar store. I don't think that this guitar store that I bought this at does a lot of business online, but I thought that this guitar was fantastic. It was certainly beat up when I saw it. It had a missing knob. It's it, You can see that there's a lot of scuffs and dings and things like that. But what I did with this guitar is puts, you know, I put some new knobs on it. I fixed the output jack. I gave it a full setup. This guitar plays phenomenally. It's got um, Duncan distortion pickups. Uh, it's got an original Floyd Rose tremolo. Uh, the neck feels great. And um, it's just all around an awesome seven string guitar that I'm really excited to uh, spend a lot of time playing. So, and guess what? I looked for this guitar on reverb.com and it's actually selling for $600. So I'm not gonna sell this one though because I, I, I can't pass up a great deal um, on, on a used instrument, um, especially one that I know has a lot of potential. We'll leave it at that. So guys, thank you so much for checking out my video on the current supply chain issues that are plaguing the guitar community. Um, particularly those of us that play seven and eight string guitars and beyond. It's just kind of a crazy thing to navigate. I know I didn't touch every single issue, but what I wanted to do is just highlight some things that I found that were interesting 
and just talk about some of the things that are happening. And hopefully by the summertime, we will have a turnaround in this and we'll be getting all kinds of interesting and cool extended range guitars in stock. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day wherever you're at. Bye-bye.